Kelly Walters here, and I had the opportunity to interview four different decorators, Ty Kane, Brandy Franken, Justin Coates, and Shelby Gage. Now, all four of these also cater to different market channels. And to simplify market channels, I'm talking about types of customers. So let's meet them. My name is uh, Ty Kane. I'm out of Denver, Colorado, and I kind of got my start as a, I was in education and I was a elementary PE teacher and uh, really enjoyed that, but just needed a little extra something uh, on the side. I think when I first started teaching, I just would be happy with an extra three or 400 bucks a month. Um, and so I was looking for extra revenue, uh, extra income, and the craft beer boom started here in Denver, I would say around 2016. And honestly, I would go into these breweries and I would just kind of look at their apparel and really be disappointed. I wanted to support them and purchase stuff and uh, was just kind of let down. And so um, my folks actually had a lot of side hustles where they would do apparel uh, when I was growing up and they used Stahl's products and all that. So that kind of was fun to hear about and um, got into it on my own as a contract decorator. And uh, fast forward four years, went full time in 2020, January 2020, and have been full time ever since. Well, I'm Brandy Franken, and I'm from Kiowa, Colorado. And I got started because I had just had my daughter, and my maternity leave was coming to an end. And I really wanted to be able to raise my own kids and not have daycare do it for me. So. I bought an embroidery machine, and from there, I became really interested in screen printing. And I am a messy Marvin, and I just knew that I could not uh, have a, I could not have screen printing on um, like a complete setup in my house because I work from home, and that just wasn't a realistic expectation. And so I began to research final cutters and I discovered one of Josh Ellsworth's videos with him uh, going over all the cutters. And from there, I discovered stalls and Transfer Express. And that is how I started. <laughs> Been in business for, I would say, going on five years. Um, going on, well, a little over two years now, uh, full time. Um, so, uh, I have a engineering background, architectural and civil. Um, so I've always been good with, uh, design and learning new softwares. And I also have a entertainment background, um, in the DJ and live music industry. Um, so I guess you could say it, uh, it all started with, uh, I just, I wanted to do party flyers and I was, kind of got tired of spending money uh, on promoters to create flyers and things of that nature. Um, just wanted to do my, to do my own. Um, so that's how I kind of got into the Photoshop and uh, the illustrator, uh, things of that nature, uh, you know, working with templates and uh, a lot of YouTube university. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the best. So, yeah, um, it's a very helpful tool. Um, and then it went to, uh, I used to have t-shirts made and stuff like that for, uh, for fans just to kind of throw off the stage or out of the DJ booth and just kind of have people wearing my stuff around town. Um, I wanted a nicer product, um, something a little bit more edgy. So I started kind of messing with, uh, I went out and bought a cricket and a cheap Amazon heat press. And uh, that's really kind of where it, where it started. A little backstory. I'm actually a nurse. That's what I went to school for. Um, and when I had my son, I was about two months postpartum. And my dad has a foundation that he's always like just had friends make the apparel for. And his friend that made us t-shirts was selling the press. And he's like, oh, I'm just, I should buy that. We can, we can do stuff for our friends in the foundation. And when I was two months postpartum, like I said, my dad was like, hey, this is like an actual like business. People actually want stuff. Do you want to go and see if you can like play with this and do something with it? I was like, sure, why not? Like, I'll go sit down there with the machine and see what I can do. And two years later, we went from a thousand square foot facility to now we have 3000 square feet and we have, gosh, 
seven new pieces of equipment since then, and it's, it's blown up. Now that you know who we're interviewing and how they got started, let's dive a little bit deeper into what sets them apart from other decorators. I know it's, I say it all the time, but really the relationships are so important. Um, I think we, we truly feel this way. This is not a, this is not us doing a sales tactic. We just, we build the relationship. We care. I genuinely care about how people are doing. Um, you know, you check in with them, ask them about how their business is going. How's their tap room? You know, any new beers coming out, you know, what's selling, just, just chat with them. Like, it's normal, right? And then it's kind of, you can go into the apparel, you know, how's the apparel selling? Um, I think the relationships are just so important and I, we all know it, but we don't all, we don't always do it, right? Yeah, so to, like we do a lot more than just heat pressing. So to focus on that question, like for stalls specifically, um, in my shop, if it's heat applied, it's from stalls. So I don't apply anything with my heat presses that's not produced with stalls and my clients know that. Um, so people will come to me and say, Hey, can I do, can I give you this pre or this patch mm. from so-and-so will you press it? Yeah, I will, but it's not, I'm not going to guarantee that. Right. So sure. if you let me work with stalls to produce the patch or to produce the DTF or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's going to last, it's going to be guaranteed. It's going to outlast that outlast that garment that I put it on. Um, so definitely my partnership with stalls, I would say makes me stick out from others for sure. What is one thing that you do really well and what is something that you could work on as a business owner? So I'm really, really great at sales. I am very, uh, I'm so phenomenal at developing relationships with existing customers and new customers and any potential customers because I am so passionate about what I do and how I present uh material or items or a sample to my customers and i just i'm very passionate about what i do and it really shows with my customers and one thing that i'm actually terrible with is organization i am a very much so a fly by the seat of my pants type of a personality and so i have learned that you have to hire out whatever you do not thrive at with such as my book work, bookkeeping. I hired some, hired someone a couple of months ago. She comes in and she does all of my accounting, consolidates everything for me. And that's something that takes me hours and it takes her what seems like a few minutes for her. <laughs> uh, I would say do well. Um, the final product of what, uh, of what I set out to, to, uh, to finish with, um, that would be, I would say that would be my do well, um, for sure. Uh, every, every business owner for sure has a, a whole punch list of things that they could get better at. Um, mine is, uh, definitely time management and, um, being able to let go a little bit, um, uh, let some things, let some things slide and not be so extremely meticulous just to get the job done. Um, but so that's a, I guess you could say that's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, so if it's, if it's time involved, uh, definitely letting loose, letting whoever I have helping me, um, you know, kind of take the wheel for a little bit to allow me to be able to do something else. Um, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely something that I need to get better at. I would say that and, and social media, uh, you know, <laughs> and not having that comes right back in time with time management, I guess, you know, not having, not having time to sit down and, and do post or just trying to just trying to get something out so fast so I could start on the next thing and not even take a picture of what I just did. Just let, everybody out there see them wearing it and and ask them hey who did your stuff um that's that's really yeah so i could get better at time management for sure now let's get their opinion on honing in on a particular niche i don't know if this is a word niching down but niche down hard 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 i mean uh, a lot of the 
marketing and people that I follow on TikTok and Instagram, like that's, they pound that home. And I really think that that is so key. Why not just be the best in that niche? Like, you know, of course I could, I could go and do, uh, high schools. Right. Um, it's just, we can still do that. Right. But our niche is craft breweries, distilleries, uh, cannabis, you know, that's kind of where we're at. Um, you know, we do have contracts with a few colleges and I think we're good with two. Like, of course I want more, but then I got to hire more help and I got to get a bigger space. And I'm kind of just, of course I want to grow. Everybody wants to grow, but I'm very happy with where we're at um, as a two to three person operation. My own personal experience, I've learned, I've tried, I mean, I've tried, I, I've tried to do it all. I've tried to keep up with the person down the street because they're obviously super successful, but I have learned through many failures and trials and all that, that I just need to focus on like what brings me joy and happiness and, and realize that if I don't get that banner sale of $75, that's okay because I'm going to get a 500 hat order because I'm super passionate about decorating caps versus trying to do it obviously everything that everyone else is doing in the world and down the street our final question which is always a super fun question said with some sarcasm is talking about pricing and calculating costs um i guess you could every job is is definitely different uh i have uh people email um or message through social media or even come in and say how much will you charge to do this um and they're not actually showing you anything they're just saying how much will you charge to put my logo on this many shirts mm -hmm. the first question i ask them is um can you send me your logo that is that's the starting point um i do require for all of my customers to have a vector logo um sometimes they'll just send me a jpeg or a png uh so with me not necessarily having any setup fees when it unless they're doing some sort of patch uh cap patches or or shirt patches or anything like that um you know that's then they start off their setup fee is their vectorizing fee um and and they they appreciate it so much more because the print is so much cleaner much better. yeah that the edges and and everything compared to what they were used to getting is is a night and day difference um so so yeah that's that's definitely where i would run with that for sure now is that something once they do that setup slash vector with you that they then get that vector file or is that something that you hold on to um just as part of doing business i have two pricing options um, one option is they pay to get the, get the vector work. Um, well, they get the vector work done. Um, that way I have it on file. It keeps their apparel looking crisp and allows me to be able to do more with their logo. Um, sure. you know, whether it's CAD cut materials, um, patches or, you know, any, it gives me a wider range to be able to work with them as a customer and and be able to open them up to more. Um, the second option is they pay to get the uh, vector work done, and then they then I give them an option to send it to them, um, and usually that's of course a higher higher rate fee. Um, sure. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. It just, I guess it just depends on how happy yeah. they are yeah. um, because you're, you're giving them, you're giving them everything that they need to be able to do as they please. Um, which, I mean, I think that's honestly, I think that's the way, the way to be anyways. You, you really don't want to hold anyone back. For heat pressing, my pricing is pretty simple. I feel like I usually take the retail cost of the garment, right? So if you're getting it from Sanmar, you take that price, multiply it times two, that typically gives you the retail cost plus the cost of the decoration. So whatever the DTF cost is six cents a square inch or the price of the patch or whatever it is you're working with plus $5 to apply it. So I like to say anytime my heat press goes down, it's $5. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm pretty transparent with that unless we're doing upwards of anywhere over a thousand or two thousand garments, then I'll adjust that price accordingly. Okay. But typically I'm in the $5 range just to drop that heat press and it's, it's worked out pretty well thus far. <laughs> and correct me if I miss her, but it's $5 plus the decoration or your cap yep. is really that $5. Yeah, so it's five dollars. I usually charge five dollars plus what the cost of the decoration is. So if the patch cost me three dollars, they're paying three dollars plus the five for me to apply it. I love that. That is very, very simple. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at the amount of orders that are coming in, you already know you're just doubling the cost of the garment. Yep. Your cost of the transfer or any type of decoration method does but doesn't change. When you're yeah. you know, when you're ordering it over and over again, it's not like it's going to um, be that new to you in terms of how much something costs. But in terms of five dollars every time your heat press goes down, that is one of the best ways that I have heard to really set yourself up in terms of profit. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a hundred shirts in that day, then you know that's five hundred dollars, not including the garment and. If your equipment goes down, if you need to do any maintenance, you have that on top of everything else in terms of what that that total garment was. So I think that's that's an excellent way. And I'm so glad that you shared that because yeah. I think more people need to hear that, that it is OK to, you know, value you and your business and then ask for that cost. Now, I could have talked with Justin, Shelby, Ty and Brandy for hours, but it's very, very clear that they all run their business differently, but are also all very successful by doing it differently. Now, if this is something you have enjoyed and you've really found some value in hearing from ambassadors or other people in the industry, please let us know down in the comments. Feel free to list some topics or questions you would like us to ask them and then that way you guys can get feedback from many different perspectives. Also down below, tell us what you loved about hearing from one of our four ambassadors. Thanks so much for tuning in and of course, happy decorating.